Welcome to MathsMaster.org. Let's have a look at how we divide fractions. Here are a couple of fractions. We are going to divide them. We are going to do 4 sixths divided by 1 third. So, another way of thinking of this is uh, to ask ourselves the question, how many thirds, how many 1 thirds are there in 4 sixths? How many times does one third go into four sixths? Well, we're talking in sixths, so I'll draw myself a rectangle here that I'll split into six equal pieces, into sixths. Each, each piece would be one sixth. And we then start counting how many thirds we have to put in until we get to four sixths of the rectangle shaded in. So that's our first third, that's one of them. There's a second third. There's two of them. So how many thirds are there in four sixths? There are two of them. So the answer to this division sum is two. So as we move on, uh, let's think about coming up with a strategy for doing this division. If we think back to doing multiplication of fractions, uh, we learnt that to multiply fractions, it's dead simple. You just do numerator times numerator, and that gives you the numerator of your answer. And you do denominator times denominator, and that gives you the denominator of the answer. Very simple. Let's see if we can use the same kind of method with division. So let's do numerator divided by numerator. In this case, 4 divided by 1. And then Denominator divided by denominator, the bottom number, 6 divided by 3. Let's see what we get. Well, if we do that, the numerator becomes 4. The denominator, 6 divided by 3, is 2. So we have 4 halves, or 4 over 2. And again, if we think of uh, fractions as a division sum, 4 halves, or 4 over 2, is the same as 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So we do get the same answer. So it seems that this method of uh, using a similar method to what we did with um, multiplying fractions, but in this case dividing them, it seems to work. But I wonder if it will work for every case. Let's have a look at this example. 3 fifths divided by 1 half. If we use that same strategy that we just came up with, then we'll divide the numerator by the numerator, 3 divided by 1, and the denominator by the denominator, 5 divided by 2. If we do that, we get end up with 3 divided by 1 is 3 for the numerator, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, two or 2.5 for the denominator. But hold on a minute, we can't have decimal numbers in fractions. That's not allowed. So this method doesn't seem to work for this example. We can't have a fraction of 3 over 2.5. That doesn't make sense. We're not allowed decimal numbers in fractions. So this method doesn't seem to work for all types of division sums to do with fractions. It works for some of them, but not all of them. So we want a method that works for all of them. What should we do instead? Have a look at this. 6 divided by 2 is 3, nice and straightforward. But 6 times a half is equal to 3, or 6 times 0 0.5 is equal to 3. So it seems as though whether we divide 6 by 2, whether we divide by 2, or whether we times it by 0 0.5, times it by a half, we get the same answer. So dividing by 2 and timesing by 0 0.5, timesing by a half, it actually does the same thing. And we can use this idea that for every number that you can divide by, there's a, another number which you can times by and get the same result. We can use this idea to help us come up with a method for dividing fractions and coming up with a rule that works for every division sum involving fractions. 
Here's a couple of fractions. We're going to do one sixth divided by one quarter. So we're taking a sixth and we're dividing it by a quarter. Using the idea that we just learnt, dividing by a quarter, then it must also have um, a fraction that we could multiply by, which would have the same effect as dividing by a quarter. There must be a fraction that we can times by, which does exactly the same thing as dividing by a quarter. Do you know what that fraction is? It's actually really straightforward. It's called the reciprocal of a quarter. And the reciprocal literally just means that you turn the fraction upside down. The denominator becomes the numerator, and the numerator becomes the denominator. So rather than 1 over 4, we have 4 over 1. So the reciprocal tells us the fraction that we can times by, which has the same effect as dividing by the original one. Okay? So both of these... Um, sums here, the sixth divided by a quarter, or a sixth times 4 over 1, they actually have the same answer. So if we want to divide a fraction, what we can do is we can actually use the reciprocal of the second fraction and times by it, and then multiplying fractions is really, really straightforward, isn't it? Multiplying fractions we can do uh, just by doing numerator times numerator, 1 times 4 in this case, denominator times denominator, 6 times 1, and we end up with 4 sixths. Now because both of those sums were equivalent, because dividing by a quarter or timesing by 4 over 1 was the same thing, we know that the answer to the original question, the division sum, a sixth divided by a quarter, must be the same as well. It must be equal to 4 sixths. So what we're doing is we're saying a sixth divided by a quarter. Well, I can't do that because if I did denominator divided by denominator, I'd have 6 divided by 4 and I'd end up with a decimal number. I can't do that. But what I can do is I can do a multiplication sum to do with fractions, which gives me the same answer as the first question. That's exactly what you do. You just turn the second fraction upside down, you write its reciprocal, and times it. And it's as easy as that. So let's just recap one quick example to finish off. If we wanted to do 2 eighths divided by 4 fifths, the first thing that we do is we take the second fraction, the 4 fifths, and we write the reciprocal of it. So we turn it upside down. So rather than 4 fifths, we have 5 quarters, or 5 over 4. And we need to turn the divide sign into a times. OK, once we get to that point, it's straightforward. We just do the 2 eighths times 5 quarters. 2 times 5 for the numerator, 8 times 4 for the denominator, and we get 10 32, so 10 over 32. Um, as a fraction for our answer. And obviously we could go on to simplify that if we needed. We could have 5 sixteenths. To sum up then, dividing fractions, all you have to remember is to turn the second fraction upside down. We call that writing the reciprocal. And then you just multiply the two fractions together. That's it. That was dividing fractions. If you want to see some more great maths videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.